Thank you. Yes. All right, so we will continue. We began our discussion last meeting on systems of linear equations. And this is actually our last topic for this uh, class. Uh, so uh, we have learned a lot equations previously up to quadratic equations, but now we will be considering the systems now of linear equations. So we learned in our discussion last meeting that you can, we can actually um, look for solutions by graphing. And so we learned that there are three possible things that would happen in systems. We'll first deal with just two variables. And I think if really I, I won't continue with the, with three variables anymore, uh, but uh, just give an introduction uh, by Tuesday. But we will be dealing with equations, systems of linear equations in two variables. And that's we can solve that to having two equations. So you have two, two linear equations in two variables. And so we look for solutions of the system. There is a possibility that there will be one, exactly one solution. And in graphing, it would be when there is a point of intersection. So we did, We I just introduced what graphing is. I, may, I might as well not ask you to graph, you know how to graph equations, but at least to be able to identify, given a graph, whether you have solution or you have no solution or you have many solutions. So when a system of linear equations has one solution, what do you call the system? From what we learned last meeting. Um, exactly one solution. That means there's one point of intersection in the two lines. What do we call that system? Um, with one intersection? Yes. In? in? Continue. <laughs> it, all right. It's in your tongue, Bethany. It's independent. All right. <laughs> so we learned that when there's exactly one solution, there is an intersection, one point of intersection between the two lines, then the system is independent. Okay, and so we we got some wonderful lesson from there in our discussion last meeting. Now, there would be times when the two lines would be parallel and parallel lines would never intersect and therefore they won't meet at all. So there will be no solution. And what do we call the system? If there's no solution, They are parallel lines. Oh, yeah. oh Manish, can you remember? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we call the system in con system. <laughs> yes, all right. So exactly one solution, one point of intersection, independent. No intersection, parallel lines, that's inconsistent. And definitely we learned that that really happens when the slope would be equal. They would have different y-intercepts, but the slope, which would be the um, coefficient of your x, if they're the same, then they will be parallel and therefore the system is inconsistent. But there are times when we can also graph uh, the two equations and they would exactly be on top of each other. In other words, it's really one line, right? And so what do we call that kind of system when the graph is exactly the same line? Dependent. Dependent, all right. So independent, inconsistent, dependent. Uh, right, and so in that situation where it's dependent, we don't have, we, we call many solutions, or we can even say infinite number of solutions, because every point along that line would be solutions to the system of equations. So 
will not deal with we learned about graphing how it looks like but we will move on to other ways of solving system of linear equations and that would now be one the first one is we call substitution right and so we we have we we dealt with substitution especially when we were solving um a world word problems previously where uh, you would say, okay, if uh, x plus y is equal to this, then you can solve for y in terms of x. So we will just review what we have done previously, but in terms of the system of linear equations. And so according to this that I have posted, what you do is to solve one of the two equations for one of the variables in terms of the other. And then we make the substitution and look for the equation, uh, look, look for the the um, uh, solution and substitute to one of the variable one of the equations to solve for the other solution right. so i think that's much better understood when i uh, give an example all right so just this example for the meantime we now have equations minus x plus y is equal to negative five to x minus five y is equal to one so let me use my laser pointer here. All right. So these are now our two, uh, two equations. That's a system. And the first thing we'll have to do is solve the first equation for y. It's easier to do this because this minus x plus y is equal to minus 5. You immediately have the coefficients to be 1. So it's easy. So in a way, in, in this way, we look for y in terms of x. Which means we isolate y and transfer x to the other side. So y, therefore, is equal to transfer x, that minus x becomes positive x minus 5. So y is equal to x minus 5. Then, in the second equation, the second equation here, we substitute all right, the, the, the value of y in terms of x. So from 2x minus 5 is equal to 1, we now have 2x minus 5. Instead of y, we substitute x minus 5 because that's our y up there. So 2x minus 5y is the same as x minus 5 is equal to 1. And then we just remove the grouping symbols. So you now have 2x minus 5 times x is minus 5x, minus 5 times minus 5 is plus 25, that will now be equal to 1. All right. And then 2x minus 5x is minus 3x, then 1 minus 25, we transfer to the other side, is minus 24. So we would find that our x is equal to 8. All right. So the question is, if x is equal to 8, and y is equal to x minus 5, then we can now make the substitution. So from y is equal to x minus 5, our x is minus, our x is 8. So it's now here, minus, a, minus x plus y, although we can substitute it here. But anyway, minus x plus y is equal to minus 5, therefore y is equal to 3. Definitely we can substitute here. So that will now be 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. Therefore, the solution is, we'll have, of course, an ordered pair. Your x is 8 and your y is 3. And so in this the problems, we actually you actually can check whether your answers are correct. So it's important to check so that you'll be confident that you did your, your uh, computation correctly. So we now have to just make the substitution. If x is 8, Minus x plus y, which is 3, is, of course, minus 5. That's correct. All right? In this equation, 2 times x, which is 8, is 16. Minus 5 times 3 is 15. So 16 minus 15 is equal to 1. And so when you find that both statements, both statements or both equations are correct, then we say, yeah, you have done the computations correctly and that if you will graph this tells you that your graph will intersect at the point eight along the x-axis and go up y three so at eight three they will intersect 
And because there is one equation, I mean, the, the one, ex, ex, one exactly one solution, then we say that this system is independent. So the x minus x plus y is equal to minus 5, to x minus 5y is equal to 1 is an independent system of linear equations. So that's substitution, and I think... Uh, we have done some of this previously, although it was it seems that it was not in a system. All right. So let's try uh, this together uh, to... Okay, so let me use my pen. So I now have <clears throat> x minus y is equal to minus 2, 3x minus 3y is equal to 9. So let's do that. So let us solve for one of the variables in terms of x. And I think it's better to do it here. And yeah, so that your since x is positive, you can actually so, uh, solve for x in terms of y or solve for y in terms of x. But you can just make the decision. But since x is positive, we just have we say x is equal to minus a positive y minus 2. So you transfer y to the other side. So x is equal to y minus, let me just erase that plus that I have written there. Okay, maybe it's better to put, because I it's, it's important to begin with the y rather than the minus 2. Okay, so you say x is equal to y minus 2. And in the second equation, we substitute Instead of x, we substitute y minus 2. So, you know, here, from here, you'll have 3 times y minus 2 is minus 3y is equal to 9. So, you now have 3y minus 6 minus 3y is equal to 9. 3y minus 3y is equal to 0 is equal to 9 plus 6 is 15. What do you say? <laughs> Your variables have been eliminated and you got 0 is equal to 15. And 0 equals 15 is a false statement, right? That cannot happen, that 0 is equal to 15. So, when we were graphing, we're saying that when the two lines are parallel, there is no solution. When you use substitution, you will make a conclusion that there is no solution when you get a false statement. So we now have 0 is equal to 15 is a false statement. Therefore, your conclusion is that this system has no solution, and therefore, this is an inconsistent system of linear equations. So this is the way to identify whether a system is inconsistent. We, if you're using substitution, that means that you'll get a false statement in the process of your computation. For graphing, you see the lines as parallel. In substitution, you will find a false statement in the process. So like 0 is equal to 15 will never happen, and therefore it is a false statement. So with that, then we say that the system is inconsistent. Right, and so I, I'm just uh, looking at it with that, uh, you know, two lines that are parallel, having a false statement. Uh, yeah, I, I will. Let me erase that one so that you can read very carefully. Okay, so erase, yes. And even in life, I think that's right. Inconsistency, when you're inconsistent. <laughs> inconsistency does not give you the right relationship with God and with your fellow men. It's it's false. It, you know, a lot of things would be false. Nothing is right. So it's important that you know uh, we remember that we need to be consistent in our dealings with people, in our dealings with God, because when there is inconsistency, like what we have seen in our um 
problem where we got 0 is equal to 15, this is, this is nothing that is right, okay? It is always false. So when we're inconsistent, then no right relationship between God and our fellow men. All right, so let's uh, move on. Let's have another um, another equation system, and then we will be. Uh, I'll give you one problem to to practice. You know, have x plus two y is equal to four. Two x plus four y is equal to eight. All right. So just the same. You'd say x is equal to four minus two y. So from this first equation, and then we substitute. 2 instead of x, we substitute 4 minus 2y plus 4y is equal to 8. Then I will have 8 minus 4y plus 4y is equal to 8. What do you find as your final uh, equation there? So minus 4y plus 4y is equal to 0. I transfer it to the other side. That will also be equal to 0. You get zero is equal to zero. <laughs> All right. So in the previous example, we had zero is equal to 15. If we say that one is totally wrong. But you see, zero is equal to zero is correct, right? It is a correct statement. It is true that zero is equal to zero. Unfortunately, you really cannot look for any other solution anymore because you don't have an X or a Y. It's zero equals zero. So I would, all right, so let me just uh, associate this with what we learned in our graphing. In our graphing, we learned that if lines would fall on top of each other, where you have a, a two equations and yet you have the same line, we now have dependent system, which means we have many solutions. In substitution, the way to determine whether there are many solutions is when you get a true statement such as zero is equal to zero. So conclusion here is that this system has many solutions. So would it work if the solution was like four is equal to four? Would it be the same thing? Yes. As long as you get you get um, a true statement. Of course, but in most cases, it will be a zero over zero because really looking at this, the two X plus four Y is exactly the same as X plus two Y is equal to four. Because if you divide the everything, the two X plus four Y equals to eight by two, you also get X plus two Y is equal to four. But you know, sometimes we just give some equations like this where they are almost the same. Yeah, 2x plus 4 is equal to 8. So as long as you get a true statement, then we'll have many solutions. And therefore, our system is dependent. All right, so that's it. So you know how to identify that in graphing. You know how to identify whether it's independent, inconsistent, or dependent in substitution. It's the same, of course, when you are using substitution. If it's independent, you'll get exactly one solution. When it's inconsistent, you'll get a false statement. But when it is um, consistent, I mean, consistent and, of course, dependent, then you'll get a true statement. Example is zero is equal to zero. Okay. So, and I, so I was just also thinking of um, this in terms of the way we deal with life, whenever we have we totally depend upon God, this will result in always a right relationship with Him as our God and our fellow man. So that's what dependence would um, result to, having right relationship with Him and with our fellow man. Of course, we, we learned last meeting that the only, you know, we don't, want to be totally dependent on other people but definitely as far as god is concerned you know we would want to be dependent on him so that's our situation all right so let's proceed okay i'll give you one problem please solve the system using substitution so i'll give you some few minutes to maybe two minutes or so to solve this problem
I think that one is easy because immediately I have x is equal to y plus 3. So you now can immediately just do the substitution. Got the answer? <laughs> Sine, you have an answer? <laughs> y is equal to 4 over 10. Oh. I got y equals negative 5. Uh-huh. And x is? Negative 2. Okay. So you got negative 2, negative 5? Uh, yeah, so a little care. <laughs> I believe that you did that correctly, but sometimes with a plus or the minus. And let me be honest, there is once in a while I also have that kind of <laughs> weakness. All of a sudden, I forget to see the negative. <laughs> okay, so that's supposed to be negative to negative five. And as I was saying, it's nice to check whether your answer is correct. So as I was saying here, that's a little easy because you don't have to do anything with the first equation because you already have x is equal to y plus 3. So you just immediately say 4 is equal to 3 instead of x, you substitute y plus 3 minus 2y. So you'll have 4 is equal to 3y plus 9 minus 2y. All right. And so we now have 4 minus 9 is minus 5 is equal to y. Therefore, y is equal to minus 5. Yes. And from here, you can substitute x, therefore, is minus 5 plus 3. And x is equal to minus 2. And to make that... Um, uh, to check, you know, of course, definitely, you now have y is equal to minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2, 4. And so you have 3 times x is minus 2 minus 2 times minus 5 is equal to minus 6 plus 10 is e minus what happened. Okay, then that will now be 4. And correct, 4 is equal to 4. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's have um, um, uh, uh, more. So this one will be our last problem for the day. Okay. So maybe let's do this together. Because here, all of your x's and y's have coefficients. But the idea is you solve for x in terms of y or you solve for y in terms of x. So whatever, so what we do is, all right. so if you want first to deal with, you want to solve, uh, you solve for y in terms of x, then you now say, I'll have three, or solve for x in terms of y. You'll have three x is equal to six minus two y. I'll just put the minus there because the minus two y. I transfer to the other side. So I want to isolate x. So I'll divide this by three. I divide this by three. So x is equal to, now have 6 divided by 3 is, uh, well, maybe you can just have 6 minus, that's okay, 6 minus 2y over 3. Use that to make the necessary substitution. Okay. All right, we have no fractions. <laughs> okay. So you now have x is equal to 6 minus 2y over 3. So from this equation... Of 5x minus 3y equals 15, you now have 5. Instead of x, we substitute 6 minus 2y over 3. Minus 3y is equal to 15. Mm, right. Okay, so now we need to uh, solve the fraction. So let's first, okay, so you now have 
five times six minus two y. So you now have 30 minus 10 y over three minus three y is equal to 15. So what do we do with that? Hmm? So how do we solve the fractions? We multiply both sides by three. Okay, so if you remember, all right, so that, okay, we multiply both sides by three. So multiplying both sides by three, let me go to the other side so that I will have uh, space. <laughs> I will have three and three from that 330 minus 10y will cancel. So I will just have 30 minus 10y minus three times negative three y is minus nine y is equal to 45. Everything now will be over three. So we're doing that in order to have the same denominator and all those denominators will not, there will be no more denominator in a way. All right. Okay. So, mm. so from there, you already have Minus 10y minus 9y is minus 19y is equal to 45 minus 30 is 15. So your y is negative 15 over 9. Oh, can we go through it and ask questions if uh, there is a problem? But if none, that's actually fractions. We now can substitute. We can solve for x by substituting. Okay, let me use a different color. Okay. So solve for x. We can substitute your y in this value here. x is equal to 6 minus 2y over 3. So you'll now have 6 minus 2y is minus 15 over 9 over three. So what will it be? So we'll now have six, <laughs> I have no more space. Okay, so six minus uh, 30, a uh, plus 30 over, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, Manish, uh, you seem to be good at fractions. Will you please, uh, what will be your final answer there? I got 144. But I you got what? 144. Over 19? Over 57. Okay, over 57. Now, divide, you need to reduce to lowest terms. I think you are right there, but reduce to lowest terms. Because like I think 144 and 57, you can divide by three. Um, for y equals negative 15, is it not negative 15 over... 19. I'm sorry about... What did I put nine? 19, sorry. That will be 19. Okay. So I think I put I put nine instead of nineteen. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, Manish used nineteen too. Okay. Over two, not over two, over three. Okay. So you should have your final answer to be forty-eight over nineteen, Manish. That's what you did. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, so I'm writing 48 over 19. You can just check whether that one is, I mean, try to solve the, the, the fractions and check whether you get 48 over 19. All right. 
So anyway, um, okay, so 48 minus 15 over 19. So your solution finally would now be 48 over 19 and minus 15 over 19. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll I'll just give some exercises for your for you to solve, uh, right? Uh, in in for for the weekend, maybe just three four uh, systems that you can solve using substitution. And so next meeting we will be working on the other uh, method and wind up the discussion. Then, as I promised, we will have our review for our final exam so i will help you prepare for that but in the meantime keep preparing uh, for for that uh, last exam will be having all right so i think that will be all for today uh, that's the substitution method i have a question yes yes Go ahead, Sine. Oh, I'm fine. Now I see. Oh, right. Okay, that's right. That's good. <laughs> Sometimes it's really good that you are able to see. I'm happy when you know you have a question, then all of a sudden you see your the answer to your question. That's great. Uh, because I was what I did is I did times by three, but I did not times the the three minus three y just from the beginning. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. So I saw nine. I'm like, where did the nine y come from? Okay. <laughs> oh, so you're wondering where the where did the nine y come from? Okay. <laughs> so it's it's okay now. Yeah. So we'll have more of this. Just uh, so it's it's not so with elimination. Then I will just uh, make the conclusion after that. So elimination is just almost. Uh, uh, it's, it's also an easy way of solving uh, math uh, systems of linear equations. All right, so I hope you have a great day today. And of course, a great weekend ahead. <laughs> and so I'll I'll mark your test, your quiz today and immediately send you my feedback. Thank you. All right, blessing to you, blessings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. So let me just stop.